10, 9, go math 10, 9. We're doing 10, 9, which is the end of unit 10. So after this, uh, we've now done unit 1, unit 2, unit 3, unit 4, unit 5, unit 7, unit 8, unit 9, unit 10. We only have approximately four units left, 11, 12, 13, and 6, because we moved 6 to the end. So um, taking a look at this, we're starting with polygons. We're starting with shapes that we know. We're solving for area, which uses the same basic formula, area equals length times width. And then sometimes we only need half of the object, like in a triangle or in a trapezoid. And sometimes we need the whole thing. Sometimes we'll have multiple objects together, and we'll need to break them apart into shapes that we know we can solve. We're applying the knowledge that we have been able to, uh, to learn in this unit. So now we're going to take that one step further. And this is sort of a side note where we're going to apply what we know about polygons and closed shapes into solving it on a graph. And then we can use those to solve problems. And I'm going to try and move the pointer over here so that we don't interfere. It says plot the vertices and find the dimensions of the rectangle. So I know I need a rectangle, and a rectangle is going to have four sides. I know that my sides need to be at 90 degree angles in a rectangle, and I need uh, so that will make them um, parallel, which makes it a parallelogram. So complete the rectangle on the coordinate plane. Plot points C, so I have point A and point B. Point C is at 2, 8. Oh, man, coordinate grids are coming back. So we've not only done coordinate grids in unit 4 and unit 5. We've looked at them again in unit 8 and a little bit in unit 9. Now they're in unit 10, these coordinate grids. You can't get away from them. So here I am plotting unit C, or let point C, excuse me, at positive 2, positive 8. And my next one, which will be point D, at positive 9, positive 8. Now, even if I only had one of those, I'd be able to find the other one because I need a rectangle, which means they need to be the same distance away from each one. And when I connect them, connect the dots, I end up with a rectangle. From there, I could solve the distance from point B to point A, point B to point A to point D, whatever I would need to solve. Okay, So I'm applying what I know about polygons and closed figures to my overall area. All right, now we are going to find the vertices. Boop. I got to bring it back to this side. I know I promised you it would go on the other side. The vertices of a triangle. Triangle ABC. So I'm starting with the vertices, and the vertices are where the two points meet, right? They're my angles. So the vertices, a point A is negative 1, positive 3. I go to negative 1, positive 3. And I call that point A. Point A, easy enough. B goes to negative 4 negative 2. And that becomes B. OK, so now I don't know if this is the left side of my triangle. I don't know if this is a right triangle. This is an isosceles triangle. I don't know if this is my base. I just know I have two points. They would connect. And the last one is going to be C at positive 2, negative 2. And sure enough, I find that that is the left side of my triangle. This is not an isosceles triangle. This is just a little bit off. One, two, three, one, two, three. Actually, it would be an isosceles triangle. I stand connected. So horizontal distance of B from 0 to negative 4. So B from 0 to negative 4 is 4 units. What I'm trying to do is find the length of side BC. So I end up with BC. 1, 2, 3, 4 from 0 to negative 4. That's 4 units. And from 0 to positive 2 is 2 units, so 6 units. And I call this B, C, and I write it with a line over it. So this is line B, C, line segment B, C is 6 units. Now, they want you to apply what we've already known about coordinate graphs, coordinate grids, to finding the distance between them. So if I know that B right here has an x-coordinate of negative 4, and c is an x-coordinate of positive 2, how do I go from negative 4 to positive 2? That's 6. I have 6 points from negative 4 to positive 2. But first, they ask me to graph the triangle. So that's what I'm going to do. All they have to do here, guys, is follow directions. So once I follow my directions, the whole thing is pretty easy. Let's go ahead and do one more. And let us, ooh, let's do the pentagon. All right, so. We are going to graph the vertices of pentagon PQRST. 
That means starting at point P to point Q to point R to point, point S to point T, P, Q, R, S, T. It goes all the way around. When I'm naming my pentagons or my, my different objects on here, I use the letters of the vertices to go around to name them. So I start at point P, P, Q, R, S, T. P, Q, R, S, T is my pentagon. P is a positive 9, positive 7 right here. And I label it. Guys, you've got to label it. If you don't label it, you're not going to know which point is which without having to do the whole problem over again. And we don't need that, right? So P is at 9, 7. Q is at 9, 3. There's Q. Whoop. And I can cross it out as I'm using it. R is at positive 3, positive 3. Let's call it R. And I did. S is at positive 3, positive 7. S, boom. And my last one, T, is at positive 6, positive 9. And that makes sense. So P, Q, R, S, T. There is a pentagon. and is a lovely looking pentagon, right? Didn't ask me for the area. Didn't ask me for any other specifics. Number one, it needed me to graph it. So now I know where all my pieces are. And it used to find the length of side PQ. Well, the length of side PQ, 1, 2, 3, 4, line segment PQ is 4 units long. And that's all I have to do. Line segment PQ is 4 units long because I drew it, I graphed everything I needed, I followed my directions, and I made my shape. Now I count them down. If I were to look at this and say, well, P was 9, 7, and Q was 9, 3, some of you are really grasping this, and you might go, well, how can I do that in a shortcut? You might say, well, 9 is the same. They're in the same x coordinate. But y, how do I go from 7 to 3? When I move from 7 to 3, they're 4 away from each other, which is why line segment PQ is four units long. So that's just kind of a shortcut that we can do. Let's try just one more to make sure that everybody knows where we're at with this. All right, the map shows location of some city landmarks. The city planner wants to locate a park at the intersection of two new roads. One of the new roads will go to the mall and be parallel to Lincoln Street, which is shown in red. So it is parallel to Lincoln Street so it's going to come this way, and it needs to go to the mall. The other new road will go to City Hall and be parallel to Elm Street. I'm going to do this in blue, so hopefully it shows up a little bit for you, right? So I need one new road. will go to the mall and be parallel to Lincoln Street. The other new road will go to City Hall and be parallel to Elm Street. So let's get rid of some of these other ones. I know it's a map. It's a city planner. Everything is wonderful. There's the new roads. They're shown in red. I can see that clearly. The other new road will go to City Hall and be parallel to M Street, which is also shown in red. And it says give the coordinates for the location to the park. OK, so the park, first I need to locate these streets. So it's going to go to the mall and be parallel to Lincoln Street. So if it starts right here and it ends 1, 2 down, it's going to be 1, 2 down. And it ends 1, 2, 3, 4 over, 1, 2, 1, 2, 3, 4 over. So all I did is I looked at the distance here and realized that I need to be 4 up from there. Or I can be uh, from this point to this point. It's going to be 1, 2 down and 1, 2, 3, 4 over. So I went 2 down, 1, 2, and 4 over. And now I have a new road. This is where my park is going to be, right? The other one is going to go to City Hall, which is down here, and be parallel to Elm Street, which means it goes up and down right along this road. And it goes one, two, three, four lines down from the mall to the library. So this needs to be one, two, three, four lines down there. And that's my second new road. So now I end up with my parallelogram, and I know exactly where my city park is. Give the coordinates for the location of the park. Well, the park is right here at positive 1, positive 1. So the only thing I need to do with this one, number one, is just follow the directions. Okay, Look at the distance and the relationship between my points 
and then figure out how long my line segments are. So if I know that this line segment is four long, this line segment has to be four long. If I know that this line segment goes down two and over four, this line segment has to go down two and over four. Looking at the relationships between them is made so much easier just by going step by step, following the directions, and writing out your work.